cavity insulation problems. Right on the seafront, continuous wind comes from that side, and every time it rains, this entire gable end gets absolutely soaked. Now we have installed, replaced the lintel, we, we have put uh, L, what's it called? IG L150 um, stainless steel lintel. It used to have just a steel iron angle to hold the outer skin and that completely blown up, especially on the sides, on the corners raising the out skin up, crumbling, rust marks running down, water running inside. Now, we have installed it. We didn't pin the DPC tray into the inner skin. We just put it against the inner skin. But what happens is, if all this insulation above, when water penetrates through the brick, goes on inside of the out skin, and runs down these little balls of insulation and transfers itself to inner skin. You can see wet there. Once it starts running on inside, sorry, on the cavity side of inner skin, starts running down behind the cavity tray. And then you get water inside. And also they had dump issue around the left hand side of the window and on the right hand side of the window on the inside and it's all due to this bloody insulation stupid thing to put in the cavities are being built to stop moisture and damp coming through why to block it up now the only way to get rid of that is good old Henry hoover up all this insulation bag it up nicely so it doesn't blow into the sea because fish will eat it and die and then I'm gonna cut into inner skin and set lead, lead flushing over the outer tray just as a safety measure This is me inspecting the cavity with, with a phone and camera, with a flush torch, just to make sure that positions where there's any more insulation left, and there was a little bit on the left, a little bit, very little on the very top, held by uh, cobwebs, looks like, and some on the right hand side. So that gives me clear, clear view of any spots with insulation that needs to be cleared out. Once it's all cleared, and bagged up. Once the slot is cut all the way along, prepare the flushing, insert the flushing, secure it up, fold the ends so any water can't overspill over and pack the joint up then it's ready to put bricks so once the bricks installed ready to do another section this is another section now so I'm Once that side is cleared, repeat the process, you can see from below. Lap the joints with two sections or two sections of lead. Once it's all done, put the bricks back in, repoint it. That will just need brushing off in a minute when it dries out a bit. I left this section as a bridging across the middle. So I could do the left hand side and I managed to get flushing pass that way. Then when I done the right hand side, 
I pass the flushing into that and overlapping for about good three inches over two lead flushings inside and then pack it all up and uh, there you go no cavit insulation anymore if there is any anything as some pug snots on the wall ties or anything and some water does get over between the skin now we got flushing there as well so it's the belts and braces so when you got weather like this there is no problem it's a bit windy and drizzly but when you get storm and this wall gets soaked the customer is not gonna have any water coming in anymore and that's how it gets it done thanks for watching Now, just if you bear for a second, I'll explain the drawing, cross section, and everything else. Right, we had an um, <coughs> issue with the uh, lintel we have installed on the property right on the seafront. Uh, well, it was an issue with the lintel, it was due to cavity insulation. What was happening? It was retrofit lintel, so we, at that time, we couldn't fit continuous cavity tray that is tucked into the inner skin. So you have a cross section, you have inner skin of the wall, then you've got 50 mil cavity, then you've got outer skin of the wall, which is brick. <coughs> so we cut the window in, and the cross section of the lintel, it's got it's stainless steel. It's got solid sheet of steel going up like that and down on inner skin. That's a one continuous solid piece of steel like that. Then you have some insulation inside. Then there is a plate, thinner steel plate that covers the cavity and that is spot welded to underside of this plate and then spot welded to corrugated or perforated piece of stainless steel that carries on I'll draw it like that and it's cleated on the back side so this section here is perforated so it so adhesive for plasterboard or render or whatever you're going to apply on inside reveal the window um, it sticks to it <clears throat> now these are bricks on inner skin and these are bricks on outer skin lintel is L1 S 50 stainless yeah so what we did during installation we had to prop it up put strong boy up and knock the wall then we installed a membrane cavity tray due to lack of access to inner skin we couldn't get it in tight into inner skin so we got it tight against the inner skin and then down down lintel and out to the front it's been cut off flush with the, with the front edge of lintel the sides the ends have been upturned and what happened a few days afterwards probably a week afterwards, we had very strong rain and the customer got water in. Water was dripping from these perforations here. So, we looked into it and I opened bricks in this section, say that brick and that brick there above the lintel and I found 
the up higher he had a cavity insulation like little polystyrene balls. And what was happening as the rain hits the surface of the wall, bricks being porous, they absorb all that water, they transfer the water to inside, they saturate these balls, surface of the balls, and if you imagine the wall is much much higher, it goes up high in the skin as well, and these little polystyrene balls, they're all the way up. So as the rain hits the gable end, water penetrates through the brick and tends to run on inner side of outer skin, which would be good because it would come down to this point of the tray and exit out. We have three weep holes on the lintel as well. So it would just weep out and drip on outside. The if you imagine window sits in this position here, that's a window. And um, but with, because of these little balls, polystyrene balls, any water penetrates there because each ball is round. So I'll try to zoom that in. So if you think the balls are like that polystyrene balls and they're all knocked up tight together like that and you've got inner skin outer skin any water that is running on inner surface of outer skin outer brick wall hits the balls balls being curved round each droplet settles on the middle of the ball drips to the next one and it can go that way, or this way, then back here, then this way, then can drip into that one as well, can move. So a droplet can move left or right. And throughout the droplet can move left or right. It's like this, it goes down, 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 and it can actually travel towards the inner skin. This is inner skin. Outer, inner, that's on this cross section here. And water can transfer through balls to inner skin, and that's what happened throughout the height of the wall. Water was transferring through these balls towards inner skin, and then started running the cavity side of inner skin, finding the gaps between wall and the tray coming down behind that that's a path of water and went inside caught by this little cleat and pulled on underside and entered the window the wheel head there so I had to remove these bricks here and then I installed a lead flushing. I cut into the brick there and I installed lead flushing going down over it. This is the way how water transfers from outer skin into the inner skin. So if you imagine this is a cavity with polystyrene balls. This is the inner sur surface of outer skin brickwork. This is cavity side of inner skin brickwork. So basically this section is like that. Yeah? When rain penetrates the outer skin, starts running on the, the cavity side, cavity surface of outer skin, gets picked up with round balls and then droplets get pulled either left or right picks up the next one, comes down, picks up the next one, can come this way, can be transferred to that one. And they can transfer slowly, falling through and 
half of the water, say, will go back to outer skin, but the other half water will go into inner skin. Once that happens, it starts running the, down the inner skin, like there, and can penetrate inside. So it's very important on very exposed seafront properties to install internal flushing. I, I've made a lead flushing, opened up bricks on this side here, on outer skin, put a disc cut inside, little grinder, ground the slot on inner skin and put L-shaped flushing uh, that was lapping existing uh, tray, cavity tray. And by doing that, if any rain comes down on inner skin, it can't get behind. Now, because penetrating water through insulation, transferring onto inner skin, can cause inner, inner surface, inner wall, to get damp. And then that can cause problems on the plaster side. So the best thing is to keep cavity clear. In the same time, whilst I opened up bricks, I got vacuum cleaner and I vacuumed up all these polystyrene balls above, left and right of the window. And that should now be belts and braces so the customer doesn't get any damp issues on inside wall around the window. I hope that explains a bit clearer as a cross-section what's happening within the wall.